Hey guys and welcome. Uh, this is going to be the first episode in the Bridges of Meaning Cooks channel. And today we are making a southern classic which is biscuits and gravy. So, first of all, I'm going to flip you around and we are going to start with the biscuit making. So, let me get you flipped around and we'll show you that. Alright, so, as you can see from our recipe list, here is some of the things that we are going to need for the biscuits. Let me get some of this out of the way here. And then we can get started. ish bowl we're going to put our two cups of flour that's about one Now, ladies and gents, I have done this so many times that these recipes, especially the gravy recipe, just kind of comes from taste. And I don't know how many of you guys have had family members that tell you, oh, a little pinch this, a little pinch that. And, uh, well, I am here to defend them because... It's one of them things that you've done it for so long, there's no longer a recipe for it. So after your two tablespoons of baking powder, you have a teaspoon of salt going in there. And then... Clickety-clank, clickety-clank. Joker, shooting my way. Okay, so now this next part is kind of contested, but Crisco. Okay. Ladies and fellers, if you can find yourself some real lard. And that is rendered pig fat. Please use it. It's better. It just doesn't even compare. The reason we use this, Crisco, in case you're unaware, is it makes the biscuits nice and airy and fluffy. Now, used to, if they wanted to add air to something and give it a little give it a little bit of a lighter flavor. They could use lard, or they could use something known as suet, which is kidney fat from around pigs, or you could get what was known as beef suet. And so they would use that to give it a little bit of light fluff and air. But now, like I said, if you can get lard, get it. 
I'm using Crisco because I have it on hand and I want to get it used up. So, we're going to go ahead and put that, drop that Crisco there right into our bowl in a big hunk like that. find these at most all your uh, thrift stores around you this is a pastry cutter I prefer this because doing it with two forks or with your hands can take a little while and if you have arthritis please don't do it with your hands it'll just kill them and you don't want that so be a fancy person go get you a pastry cutter I think I paid like 50 cents for this thing and it's it's wonderful and so what we're going to do now is we're going to use that pastry cutter. And we are just going to mash that stuff up. And what you're looking for, and this might not be enough Crisco, we might have to add a little. No, oh, never mind, I got stuck to my pastry cutter. There we go. We're just going to get that mashed up the whole nice and neat. What you're looking for by the time you're done mashing up your fat here is you want it to be about pea sized crumbles in your flour. take some of that flour right now and we look that's about pea sized crumbles of the fat you can see in there and so by the time you're done when your biscuits are done that Crisco those little pea sized crumbles what's going to happen is that Crisco is going to melt on down inside them biscuits and make them real light and airy and um I'm moist on the inside which is what we're going for and look here's another pro tip if you wanted to you could even use butter instead of the Crisco and get the same result so that's up to you I've seen it done all kinds of ways I'm using Crisco today because like I said I had it on hand and I wanted to get it used up and so that's what we're going to do now, let me pause you here for a moment, and then we'll get back to the next part. Okay, so this is a pro tip right here. You want to make sure that you're not preheating your oven, because preheating your oven is the smart thing to do, ladies and fellers. So you want to make sure that you don't do that and that you wait and we're going to go at 350 degrees because that seems about right and I do apologize for my can Canadian friends if y'all don't know what 350 degrees Fahrenheit is you might have to look that one up do your conversions but I'm going to tell you in American because I'm in America and I don't want to do the conversions right now. So, next thing we're going to add is our one cup of milk. To this mixture after I have me. Oh, that's so good. After I have me a sip of coffee. Put 
maybe they put it over here in the other one. Yep. <coughs> so, biscuit mixer, or cake icing tool, or whatever else you might want to use it for. Get you one if you ain't got one. Put your milk right in there amongst that. Now what I like to do is I like to put most of my milk in. And then just gently stir it. Ever so loverly like. And I will show you what that looks like when it's ready. Okay, when it's ready, it ought to look like a very loose dough like this. And so what we're going to have to do, let's get you out the way there, milk, is we're going to have to put out some flour on our table. And we're going to have to put this in some flour and we're going to have to knead it until it's ready. Get you your flour here, put it out on your work surface, like so. Please forgive my countertops, we have not remodeled that part yet. this out onto our work surface and then we'll get to need so I'll show you that part in just a second all right so once you have it out on your work surface what you can do here is we're just gonna flip and push flip and push and it shouldn't take very much of this And, voila, your dough is ready. Now, depending on how many people you're going to feed with this. Oh, there's our preheating done. Looks like we did it just in time. So you can make these like half an inch thick, three quarters of an inch thick if you want. You can make more of them if you want. You can do it however you want. But I have noticed that if you're going to pair these biscuits with gravy, that you can make them about that thin. And they'll turn out just fine. Then you get your bis biscuit cutter mat at 4,000 here. And you just start cutting out your biscuits like so and this is not necessity now there are some women in the south that do not use a biscuit cutter they will just make what they call cat head biscuits which is they take it in their hands and I'll show you here in a minute how you do it because those are my daughter's favorites and you just form them And I also forgot to tell you, you can use this recipe and omit the one cup of milk and do three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. That will also work. And that's your buttermilk biscuit recipe. Although if you're going to do buttermilk biscuits, don't need them like, like we did. And make them out into about a loose log like that. And then take your pizza cutter and cut it. And then put them dudes in a cast iron skillet and throw them inside the oven. Don't do a baking sheet. Do a cast iron skillet if you're going to do that. Alright, so to make a cat head biscuit, here's our dough. We just pinch off a lump of it. About that size. And then you just form it into 
a loose biscuit shape like that. And there you go. But now, to make the last ones, we'll make them a little bit thicker. There we go. And now, fellers, listen. And this is just for the fellers. If you're doing this at home, you see that mess there? Don't leave that for your wife. Okay? That's wrong. It's stupid. Don't do it. It'll cause you lots of strife and arguments in your marriage. Just make sure that you clean it up when you're done. Now, you see this flower? There ain't much wrong with it. So, we're actually going to reserve that back because that will go in our gravy. And that will be the next part I show you just as soon as we need to make the gravy. Alright, now that the biscuits are in the oven, the next thing to make, logically, is the gravy. So you get your sausage. Don't worry, it didn't stay in the packaging. Jeez, I'm redneck, but I ain't that bad. I know you have to remove the plastic. So once I remove the plastic and get it cooking, I'll show you that. Alright, now what you're going to do with your sausage here is you're going to make sure that you cook it until it's completely done all the way through. And then we will get to the part that's hard to measure to make the recipe for you. So, we're actually going to cook this all the way through and then I'll get right back with you. I will unpause for a second here and tell you all that the trick, if you're going to make a good southern sausage gravy, I don't know if you can see this, but make sure that you get a sausage that's real fatty. And the reason is, we're going to use that fat to our advantage when it comes to making the gravy. Or, I've been told Europeans call it, this is more like a roux with meat added. Call it what you will, but that is, that fat is going to be a good base for our, for our gravy sauce. Alright, now once you've made it to this point, can you see that, that fat in there just sizzling away? Once we've made it to that point, We're going to turn the heat right down. Right about there. Now, you might be tempted at this point to remove the sausage, but don't do that. That's a rookie mistake. I've made that mistake. It will cost you in the long run, and your gravy will not turn out well. Take your flour. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go right over top of that sausage. So about that much. And then we're going to go ahead and mix that sausage around with that flour until it is evenly coated. What you're looking for here is you don't want anything to be glossy. You got a little extra flour in the pan, that's alright. You just don't want your sausage to have that greasy, glossy look to it. You want to make sure it's all coated. That's how you know that you're going to get the right consistency. And then, begin to add your milk. Just a little bit at first. Not much, because you don't want to scald the milk. What we want to do is get the milk and flour to mix together with that grease, and that's our roux base. 
but we don't want to scald the milk. So that's why we add just a little bit at a time. Not much. process here. A little bit, then a little bit. And that heat and that milk and that flour together along with that fat, they're going to thicken up and make us a nice gravy. And this is why I said this is a really loose recipe because I don't know if you've ever been around family members that say, oh, pinch of this and a dash of that. Well, they mean it because they've done it enough that there's no recipe for it. It's all by taste to them. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit thicker there, which is what we're looking for. So this is the point where we add the last of the milk, not much. Let me just finish stirring it around until you get to about the thickness that you want. And some people like a little bit of a thinner gravy, I don't, I like thick stick to your ribs gravy. Kind of stays with you longer. Checking our biscuits. Not quite. Almost. You just stir that. Get that good thickness you want out of it. which means it's now time to season to taste. Pro tip, don't use regular salt, use seasoned salt. Get you some of that in there. And of course, Ladies and gents, that's it. That's how you make biscuits and gravy. So let me know if you enjoyed this. If you did, we can keep it up. If not, that's fine too. See you next time.